As he enters the final outback stages of his round Australia cycling record attempt, Rod Evans now looks like eclipsing the current record by more than 20 days. More than, more than 10,000 kilometres have passed beneath his tyres in the attempt, and this marathon man on two wheels is set to ride into the record books for quite possibly a long time. With 10,200 kilometres of Australian roads behind him and 3,800 to go, Rod Evans now has the round Australia cycling record firmly in his sights. In fact, he's so confident he candidly predicts only one thing can rob him of his dream. Oh, I suppose falling off my bike when I get too sleepy. <laughs> That's about the only thing. And as he approached Darwin, the previous record of 80 days was looking very, very fragile. I'm now 20 days ahead of the record. Um, as of today. In achieving that, Rod has had to put in some gruelling days on the road. A couple of days ago I rode 460 kilometres over a day and a night, and in that whole time I only took 16 minutes off the bike. In his battle with the bitumen, just what did Rob find was his greatest enemy. Pain's your constant companion on a ride like this. And just how bad was that pain? Well, it was bad enough to make me vomit yesterday. So I guess that's pretty bad. But his dedication to the job at hand has obviously won this man the admiration of his support staff. Vanessa Bridge, who's been with him since day one, explains why. The most amazing thing that I felt right from the beginning is that he can get out and do 300, 350, even 460 kilometres in a day, go to bed, get up in the morning and do it again. Now if he does reach Perth with a new record between his handlebars, what advice does he have for any future contenders? The person that breaks the record I'm setting is going to have to consider riding around with a minimum amount of sleep and uh, certainly the minimum number of rests. And Vanessa Bridge is adamant about the qualities needed for such a gruelling two-wheeled uh, marathon. Other than that, somebody who's as good as Rod is. It's got to be. Perth cyclist Rod Evans is on the home stretch in his Around Australia record attempt after crossing the WA border near Kununurra at the weekend. The solo cyclist is well ahead in his bid to better the 80-day record which was set by a team of riders. I think there's never ever just one purpose or one reason for doing these sort of things. You know, the, what appeals to me is obviously the determination that you've got to have to do something like this. But uh, you know, the, the record's previously held by a team of four riders and... Uh, it's a long, long way, and I think that it just appealed to me to try and break it as a solo record. ...is 21 days ahead of schedule and hopes to break the record by 30 days. Saddle sore and surviving on less than six hours sleep a day, he's hoping to arrive in Perth this weekend. A Perth man tonight is peddling his way into the record books as the fastest man around Australia on two wheels. An exhausted but tenacious Rod Evans is tipped to knock at least 30 days off the previous record. Roving reporter Mike Searle and cameraman Wayne Curiata caught up with him about 100 kilometres south of Caratha last night. It all began 45 days ago when Rod Evans left Perth to cycle around Australia. His aim to slash 30 days off the current record of 80. It's been a fast and gruelling 45 days since then, his spindly wheels covering thousands of kilometres as he stops for no one, not even seven nightly news. How's it going? No, I'm pretty tired. It's blind, almost maniacal determination which keeps his feet pumping. As he covers up to 460 kilometres a day, a feat for any driver, let alone cyclist. <laughs> Despite his determination, as night falls, he's forced to stop and change bikes and don protective clothing. It's not been an easy trip. All that could have gone wrong has. But the biggest problem, his feet. They've swollen two sizes since the ordeal began. Two days ago I was actually walking at this time of night. Um, I'd ride for a little while and then walk and ride, walk. But he's taken nothing for the pain because the main reason for this asthmatic's decision to punish himself like this is to prove Records can be broken without the aid of drugs. 
and as he cycles off into another night of pain, he says he pities the person who tries to break his record after he arrives back in Perth on Monday. Mike Searle, Seven Nightly News. The long-awaited fulfilment of an extraordinary feat of endurance this morning for a remarkable Perth cyclist. Less than an hour ago, Rod Evans crossed the finish line after slashing 30 days off the previous record for cycling around Australia. Rod Evans' record-shattering ride is hard to believe. Four Danish Olympians held an 80-day record. Rod made it in just 50. But it took some pushing. As he approached Midland this morning, he'd been riding since 2am. I've probably been willing to take more risks than most people normally would in terms of going without sleep you know, for long periods of time. The other thing is we've really, really gone very, very hard down from Darwin. We've ridden down from Darwin at uh, a pace just under the pace that would be required to break the Cross Australia record. Rod over 14,000 kilometres battle flooding rains and towering east coast mountains. Though hurtling down one mountain road, he was clocked at 84 kilometres an hour. With five hours sleep last night, Rod considered he'd slept in. Normally it was three to four hours in bed each night. Sleep is what he's looking forward to most of all. I definitely want eight hours sleep. <laughs> That's what I want. A ride like this changes your whole perspective on life. You know, that to be able to be in a warm car or to able to go to bed at night knowing you can have eight hours sleep, that'll be unbelievable. Max Harwood, National 9 News. Perth endurance cyclist Rod Evans rode into the history books today, smashing the Round Australia cycling record by 30 days. But it was more than just a personal achievement for the battling Evans, who set out to prove that nothing is impossible. Rod Evans left Perth last month wanting to prove that no mountain is too tall, no road too long. Now, 14,000 kilometres further down that road, the 31-year-old asthmatic is only minutes away from achieving what others said was impossible, to ride around Australia in less than 50 days. It might not be the most comfortable way to travel, but for this asthmatic, life wasn't meant to be wheezy. How are you feeling? Uh, not too bad, actually, yeah. A lot better than Time for a quick break in Midland and already talk of a new record attempt. I de definitely have to look at the Cross Australia record, uh, given the, you know, the, the speed I've come down from Darwin. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very confident if I could get together the, you know, the right sponsors and the right support crew that uh, I could give that a real nudge. In Forest Place, cyclists young and old were waiting for their hero. <laughs> 49 days, 22 hours and 31 minutes. A champagne performance that brought tears to the eyes of some. I just say that if you've got a, a dream or a goal, you've just got to push for it, push for it, push for it, just never ever give up. And, that, and I guess that's what I did. Kieran Murphy, 10 News. An age when many sportsmen are thinking of slowing down a bit, 31-year-old Perth cyclist Rod Evans took up a challenge. Today he achieved his goal by shattering the world record for riding around Australia. Ian Neal with more. Evans, who overcame the disadvantage of being an asthmatic, rode into Perth today after covering the 14,000 kilometres in just 50 days. He attributes part of his success to the 30 rounds of sandwiches made for him by his support crew each day. Most were Vegemite or peanut butter. He slashed 30 days off the previous record set by a team of four Danish Olympic cyclists in 1985. Evans says he looked on the marathon ride as a personal challenge and to set an example to young asthma sufferers. As he crossed the finish line, with memories of swollen feet and saddle soreness forgotten, Evans said he will now set his sights on a record ride across the continent. And obviously that's going to have to be one of my next goals. Ian Neal, National 9 News. The Guinness Book of Records time for cycling around Australia has been slashed by more than 30 days. 31-year-old Rod Evans rode into Forest Place in Perth today after his 49-day journey. Three, two, one. 
Since Rod Evans left Perth on May the 14th, he's been cycling for about 18 hours a day. The previous record for the 14,000 kilometre journey was 80 days, set by four Danish Olympians in 1985. Evans was determined to break that record. Today he came home to a rousing reception after 49 days, 22 hours and 31 minutes. Evans was looking remarkably fresh after his ordeal and looking forward to a celebratory glass of champagne. But the cork was a little hard to budge. It's not the first problem I've had, you know. It's not the first problem. <laughs> Evans' achievement was made even more significant by the fact that he suffered from asthma since childhood. Now, I've just been a great believer in if you can dream something, you can do it. And uh, everybody said that this record couldn't be broken. And I was just very determined to do it, and I thought I had the ability to do it. So that's, that was probably the starting point of all the reasons that I now have. And would he do it again? Oh, no, no. I would never, ever try that round Australia record again. Just like our very special guest, of course, there are records made just to be broken, but Rod Evans didn't just break the 80-day record for cycling around Australia, he blew it right away by 30 days. Welcome, Rod, and congratulations from not only us here at uh, Channel 9 and Wide World of Sports, but all of WA and Australia, I suspect. Yeah, I don't know much. about that little playoff earlier, Unsung Heroes. I think that you're getting great plaudits for an excellent effort. Why did you do it? Well, I think the, the reason that you do it at the beginning is completely different to the reason you do it at the end. The, the reason at the beginning was a very personal reason. I've always admired the ultra marathoners, both in Australia and overseas, the, the uh, Sydney to Melbourne marathoners, Sir Hubert Opperman, and I thought this was my chance to, to enter that sphere in a very small way, obviously. Um, towards the end, you don't know what the reasons are. It's really, it just becomes an obsession, and, and even now as I sit here, I find it very hard to recall the reasons for actually doing it. Well, we'll go back to the start, of course, because uh, you... Uh You've got a great concern for asthmatics, haven't you? That's Was right. that one of the reasons why you set out to conquer Australia? I, I think that the, so, the reason that you do these things is a, is a personal reason, and the, the public reasons are secondary. But there are certainly public reasons for doing it. And w one of them, obviously, was the asthmatics, and the fact that I'm an asthmatic, and you know, who would think an asthmatic could go out and break a, a record of this nature? And uh, you know, I was hoping that other asthmatics might be encouraged by it. What sort of lead-up did you have, uh, Rod? I mean, 14,000 kilometres is a daunting task. What sort of training did you put in before you set off? Here you are leaving Perth. Well, I, I'd, uh, I'd been training for 12 months specifically for this. Um, the, the racing fraternity really hadn't seen too much of me in, in Western Australia. Uh, and up in the last few weeks, I was doing about 800 kilometres per week uh, on a fairly heavy bike. Well, uh, one thing mentioned the the fact that you are an asthmatic, there was one occasion uh, where you had a bit of trouble out in the top end somewhere there. You'd lost your puffer or whatever, hadn't you? No, that's right. The support crew, uh, the car broke down and uh, it charters towers and I was about a quarter of an hour ahead of the support car and uh, I was out through the other side of charters towers before I heard about the breakdown and I was looking forward to about 200 kilometres without any support crew and I had no food, no water. But the worst of all, I had no asthma inhaler and I needed it. But what, what happened there? Someone... Well, what happened was that uh, it ended up that a lady in a hotel, um, just in a small town that I went through, um, she heard about my plight and she came out and gave me her asthma inhaler and said that I could have it. <laughs> and off I went and I was happy as Larry. Like a good Samaritan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But people were like that all the time. Talking about, you know, no food and water, what did you actually eat and drink uh, while you were... You're cycling and, you know, you, you don't look as though you've lost too much weight. No, I didn't lose too much weight. Probably the, one of the weaknesses of what I did was that I wasn't scientific enough about my food. We were very scientific in other areas, not so much with the food. Uh, we started out trying to be fairly scientific, but eventually boredom overcomes you. And uh, I found that sandwiches were the only thing that interested me. And, they, and the support crew just made up all sorts of things that would interest me in sandwiches, like Fruit Loops in sandwiches and all <laughs> manner of things that wouldn't, don't sound too appealing right now. How did you pass the time on the bike? Uh, I guess you'd be around about Victoria here. Um, by the uh, the jacket that you're wearing, I guess you're getting into cold terrain there. Uh, you don't seem to be wearing a Walkman or a similar appliance to listen to music on the way. No, I, I, the, I found with the Walkman that it actually um, interrupts the rhythm of your legs and distracts you. And, and this whole record's about determination, and 
you, all the time you're at yourself and at yourself, a even here it's not close enough to actually see the look in my face, but you're at yourself to push and push and push. And, uh, you know, here we are riding through the rain and, uh, you know, I went through two weeks of solid rain and uh, it was just, you actually you can see it on my face now, it, it's just a matter of determination and you can't have anything distract you. Your sleeping patterns on the way, I mean, you obviously went uh, long distances uh, without a lot of sleep, otherwise you wouldn't have clipped 30 minutes, uh, I'm sorry, 30 days off 80 days. But you were telling us prior to coming on air that uh, you'd just grab a, a literal catnap and then you'd jerk a weight. Tell us about uh, what happened when you did go to sleep at times. Well, what, what, what happened was that to break a record of this nature, I had to go without sleep. That was, that was how I did it. And I was only having three or four hours sleep a night. But uh, that's not enough when you're trying to go as hard as I was. And uh, what I found is if I could have two 10-minute sleeps during the day, that had a an enormous impact on how well I felt. In fact, what I would do is I would sit in the car and go to sleep instantaneously and have a very, very uh, vivid dream with psychedelic colours and abstract, you know, as if I was on some form of drug. But like your jumper, mate. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> in fact, first I was thinking that I was looking at my jumper, but... Um, and then I'd, uh, then I'd wake up and in actual fact I felt as if I'd had eight hours sleep. And uh, towards the end of the ride, when we were determined to break 50 days, we thought it might be necessary for me to ride the last three or four days without sleep. And um, all we were counting on was having these 10 minute sleeps, one or two of these 10 minute sleeps each day. And we found that it's surprising, you can live on that, that amount of sleep. How have you been sleeping since? Well, not too well, because what happens is that, um, you know, you push yourself so hard on a record like this, it's very, very hard to get home and then unwind. And, uh, you know, each night I've been waking up thinking I've got to get on the bike again, or I've imagined I was in a bike race, or last night I imagined I was in a cross-country race, and, you know, it was a 12-hour race, and we are really pushing each other. I, I'm finding it pretty hard to unwind, actually. Tell us about the truckies, mate. They were a big help. Yes, the truckies were good. They, uh, across the Nullarbor, we realised there was something going on, because they were obviously talking to each other, but when we got to the East Coast, we actually found out that they were running a, a, a betting book <laughs> on how far I could get each day. And, um, and they were always wrong because they just didn't realise how far a bike rider could go in a day. And then eventually they worked out that I wasn't sleeping at all because they might see me at 11.30 at night and then another truckie would see me at 2.30 in the morning and then another truckie would see me when the sun was getting up and they just thought I was going through non-stop. And uh, they obviously started wondering what I was taking that they weren't. <laughs> Rod, uh, I guess this last 12 months in sport, there's, there's never been quite so much uh, conversation, discussion about stimulants being taken by mm. sports people to achieve high levels in sport. Mm. Now, you'd possibly like to quickly clear any thought that uh, you took stimulants to achieve this result. Yeah, so that's a very important issue because, you know, I've been very anti the, the drug taking in sport. and. Um, there was a lot of talk when I got to Sydney that I must have been taking some form of drug either to stay awake or, or to enhance my performance and uh, because people didn't believe you could go that far, that fast for that long. Uh, I then uh, arranged for one of the local newspapers to uh, organise a random drug test because I, I was taking absolutely nothing and, uh, and I've subsequently been drug tested at 5.30 one morning, which is most <laughs> unlikely at time. Um, you know, to clear, to make sure that everybody realises that I was on nothing. But th there's a, there really is a moral there because I wanted to show, particularly young kids, that you know, here I was. I went out and I've done this thing completely drug free and I've smashed this record. And I honestly believe that if people um, come to realise just how much they can use their mental powers. But really, drugs don't stand it against mental power. Well, here you are. This is the last leg, uh, Rod, and it must have been a wonderful feeling for you. What was the actual impact like when you rode into Perth knowing that you'd done so marvellously well? Well, I guess it's a very emotional time because you've pushed yourself so hard, but uh, um, I just didn't realise how many people in Perth knew, knew what I was up to. If I'd turned up in Perth and there was only six people at the finish, I, I probably would have been happy, but to... To see, you know, 500 or 1,000 or whatever people that were there, uh, it was a great thrill. Well, Rod, thanks very much, mate, for coming in today. I'm sure that the people of Perth are going to hear a lot more about you, uh, simply because you've done something that no one else has ever done, and uh, you're a, a jet setter, a trend setter, and uh, you're to be congratulated. It's fantastic. Yeah, thanks very much, Rod. I'll, I'll definitely have a go at the Cross Australia if I can get the sponsorship support, and also particularly the support crew, which is absolutely essential to those sort of records. Well, there's the Cross Australia coming up for Rod. He's promised us that. So all you sponsors out there, 
dig deep into the pockets, get that support crew ready, and uh, you know, let's hope that uh, you can win that one, Rod, and thanks again. Well, we've got to move... How long would it take you to cycle around Australia? Me, 35 years. But probably to you, close to a year. Like Arthur Richardson, who did it in 1899. Rod Evans just smashed the record, and we spoke to him last week about his gruelling trip. Good morning, Rod. Good evening. How are you? Um, How long did it take you? How are those little legs, darling? Are they tired? <laughs> Leave his legs alone. <laughs> Any excuse to touch a man's knee? Oh, no, he's just done a fabulous thing. He's just broken the world record. How many days was it? Well, I took just under 50 days, but in answer to your question, how do I feel, I'm still tired. You know, yeah. I've been back for two weeks, so I'm still tired. Yeah, well, you would be. You just... 50 days. Can I ask you something very personal? What about your backside? That must hurt. <laughs> well, I don't know. Must it's have... a sort of TV discussion, but... <laughs> oh, no, it is. Days, yeah. It is on this show. Anything... <laughs> it's not TV. <laughs> the, um, your backside takes a real punishment. You, yeah. You eventually develop saddle sores, like boils. Yeah. And um, because you're only spending three or four hours off the bike each day, you don't have time to treat them, and eventually you just ride on them until they burst. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that hurt, wouldn't it? Pain's no stranger to you, <laughs> is it? <laughs> no, is that it... the worst part, or what's the other? The legs? What about your cartilages and all that? Oh, no, actually, the legs stood up very, very well, but your feet swell. It's the same as with the Westfield Marathon. Your feet here swell. Here we are. About... We've got some film yeah, so, Well, in actual fact, here my shoes have got tape on them. We've just, we're not on them at the moment. Uh, my shoes were taped up and what we do was when my feet swelled we cut the side out of the shoes in fact my feet went swelled two sizes what was the record before you've just broken it well the record was held by a, a team of four danish cyclists and it was 80 days and that was regarded as unbreakable are they all your bikes on the top there yes how many uh, did you go through well uh, you know they're all still workable now we've got them home but uh, i broke a fair few wheels on some of the rough roads and also on the um, on the grids up up north now what about your backup team who have you got in there well, we started off with two. Good um, on your look, isn't that fabulous? <laughs> we start, I'm looking fairly really tired there, but we started off with two and uh, eventually expanded it to four people in the backup team. But uh, interesting enough with a backup team, a rider can usually outride a backup team. And, uh, and what was happening was that the backup team was forever, you know, trying to stay awake when I was pushing on ahead. Oh. So... Are you, a, are you actually a professional rider? A bike no, rider? No, I'm still, I'm still an amateur cyclist. Yeah, I, amateur, this, eh? I did yeah. this in an amateur record, but... Uh, because this is very specific training, I've actually been away from the racing scene for 12 months training specifically to yeah. do this. Yeah. Right, now you're from Perth. Well, I'm originally from Victoria. This is home to me. I used to work in Melbourne, but uh, I'm now living in Perth. It's absolutely beautiful. So what here. happens? Do you fly back or are you going to ride back? <laughs> well, <laughs> fly back, <don't> <laughs> I'd, uh, I, if I could, I'd drive back because interestingly enough, the Nullarbor is, is a beautiful drive. People think that it's a uh, it's a long, long way and it's very boring, no, but it's, it really is a beautiful drive. Yeah. Well, you may be able to help me. I've, uh, I'm sort of into exercise and everything now, and I've got an exercise bike at home, and I do 10 miles in the morning, half an hour, and I do 10 miles at night. Now, is that good exercise for me on an exercise bike, or should I be yeah. out on a bike? No, no, you can, you can actually train on an exercise bike. The mistake that people make is that they don't train past what's called the threshold level of their heart. In other words, they get on an exercise bike and just cruise around. Uh, what you need to do is you need to push yourself fairly hard. So I should be Does doing it... 20 miles instead of 10? No, no, you can still do your 10 miles, but in actual fact what you're meant to be doing is training at more than 60% of what they call your um, you maximum You don't coast it, you've got to push it. You've, yes, you've push got to push, push, you've got yeah. to push hard, and, and that's the mistake people make. They go for a jog where they'd be better perhaps going for the jog but putting in a couple of sprints yeah. to push themselves a bit harder. You must have had some funny, funny things happen on a way. 50 days out there on a bike, you must have seen some funny things or... Well, Made some, some characters, did you? Well, some of the things you see aren't, of course, there because you're hallucinating. <laughs> oh, good hope. So, really? That's <laughs> yeah, so. like half our crew. It's like you see, you, see, you, see something, you see something come across the road and you think, what's that? And it's nothing. Well, well that's right. For, I, with the sticks on the road, I was forever thinking they were snakes and I'd give them a big wide berth and, until one day I rode past this stick <laughs> and ended up it was a snake. But, uh, but he was only about 10 inches long and was, when I realised it was a snake, I was very close to him and I thought, well... You know, he was just wriggling along the road. I didn't think I was going to do any damage, but it ended up he got fairly annoyed about it and he curled back on himself and had to go up my front wheel. Gee. So I wish I'd run over him because he got a fairly bad attitude. That <laughs> As ever. So what's next on the list? Where do you go from here? Um, well, obviously, I'm trying to rest and that's mm. why I'm here in Victoria at the moment on the farm, just had, you know, trying to recover. What farm's that? Down in Geelong. I've got a family farm just out of Geelong. But, yeah. uh, so you're a Geelong boy? That's right. You'd be happy the way they're going, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm very happy. Mm. I would have liked to have seen Hawthorne lose yesterday, but anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
But, uh, you know, I've still got a slightly blurred vision from the ride and things like that, and that'll just take a bit of time Takes to recover. Time. Why is it? Well, because you, you pushed yourself so hard? Well, you push yourself so hard, eventually you get to the point where you can't tell which side of the... We're over here, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Which side the <laughs> white posts are on yeah. there. I was trying to work out easy. Which side <laughs> the white posts are on the road, and, and you... And eventually you get to the point where the only thing you can see is a white line, and so you just look down between your legs and follow and the And what sort line. of food did you get into in order? Well, that was the part that we weren't particularly scientific about. We, we were scientific at the start, and then eventually boredom overtook me, and I just started eating sandwiches, and, and the support crew just made up any sort of sandwich that would amuse me, and I had Fruit Loop sandwiches and all sorts of you things. You didn't, didn't get into <laughs> pasta and all that to give no. yourself more. Well, Very hard on the road. You haven't got time, because you're spending 18 hours on the bike. You haven't got time to be sitting down over a bottle of red wine and, and some Italian pasta. You, mm. and so Did you really, think of all those things while you were riding? Well, you think of anything except what you're doing because it's so painful. Yeah. So uh, I didn't actually think of a bottle of red wine, but I certainly thought of a hot shower or having a. Do you have a lady friend with you on the on the on the run? Well, I had uh, my support crew was one male and three three women. Actually, women are. You did it in fifty days. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> 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 women are are better at uh, at doing a support crew job. Are they? Organising, yes. that's why. Better organising yes. 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 and more tender. But what is yes. what's next? Better have you got a are you going to ride around Canada or something? Well, since I've done this record, because people didn't believe it could be broken, and I've broken it by so far, I've been offered to do other rides, uh, obviously. Mm. Um, race Across America could be a possibility, but I certainly want to try and break Sir Hubert Moffman's 24-hour record yeah. and also break the Across Which Australia record. Well, we're, we're just trying to verify that. In fact, I might have to give Sir Hubert a bit of a call and ask right. him exactly right. what it is. Actually, uh, I could uh, uh, throw a challenge to you. How long do you think it'll take to ride around Denise? <laughs> <laughs> you rotten thing. <laughs> Thanks very much, Robert, for being with Zane. All the best for the future. What a fantastic effort. Good he looks fit, doesn't he? Oh, brilliant. Well done. Yeah.